I'm Katie Schuler, and today I'm going to tell you about XBuilder Deployer. Um, so this video is meant to be a high level level overview of what XBuilder Deployer does, um, so that when you're following the steps um, to set up XBuilder Deployer and deploy your um, experiments with XBuilder Deployer, you sort of know what you're doing. Um, you have the big picture of what's going to ultimately happen. Okay. <clears throat> So I created XBuilder Deployer as a way to deploy XBuilder projects to a cloud server. So XBuilder projects are essentially research projects, um, and one component of doing research projects is often web experiments. So when we code our experiment, we end up needing to publish it to the web so that we can show them to participants and collect participant data um, back to our database. Um, and this part can be really tricky for people. Um, it's one of the major gates, I would say, in doing web experiments. Um, and I really wanted to create something that allowed people to have sort of stewardship over their own data and their own um, work, while also making it easy for them to deploy their projects. Okay, so the instructions on XBuilder Deployer um, have really three big steps. First is to set up a server, and I have a video for that if you want to watch and watch that portion. Um, the second is to set up XBuilder Deployer. There's another video that shows you how to walk you through those steps. And then finally, uh, the third step is to actually deploy your XBuilder project to your server. I haven't made the video for this yet, but I will, so there will be a video for each of these. And then I just included the links to the XBuilder docs um, to the deployment page so you could follow along on these instructions there if you want to. Okay, so the very first step in using XBuilder Deployer is to set up a cloud server. Um, so we actually do a couple of things. We set up a cloud server, we set up a domain name, and then we point the domain to the server. Um, so I'm just going to give you a sort of pictorial overview of what that would look like so you can hold it in your mind while you're doing it. So the first step is set up your server. We create a cloud server, um, and the server needs to have Docker, Docker Compose, and Git, but that's the only requirements. Um, so once you have a server set up, you can also purchase a domain name. I purchased hellohappypeople.com in the video, so you can see how that looks. Um, and then the final step is to point people who visit hellohappypeople.com or visit your domain name to our server. Um, so note that there is nothing on our server at this point in the, in the video. Um, at this point in the instructions, we've only just created a server, created a domain name, and then created a couple of A records that point people who visit our domain name to our server. Okay, so then we want to set up XBuilder Deployer. Um, so XBuilder Deployer, uh, we do a couple of brief steps. We clone the repository, we set a couple of environment variables, and then we start XBuilder Deployer's containers with Docker Compose. Um, it's super simple, um, but it constructs a bunch of, a couple of really important infrastructure things for you so you don't have to bother with all that setup. Um, so the first thing it does is create a Docker network called XBuilder Deployer. Um, this is the network that all of our Docker containers, each of our XBuilder projects can join um, so that they can talk to each other and be sent back to our users. It also creates a Docker container running Nginx Proxy Manager. Um, An Nginx Proxy Manager is uh, something that helps orchestrate people who visit hellohappypeople.com come in and now they reach nginx proxy manager and nginx proxy manager can route the traffic to the appropriate place so now essentially our server can talk back to people over the web so the very first thing that happens when you set this up is that you can nginx can send a message back to people who visit hellohappypeople.com and it will say congratulations a web page loads that says congratulations you successfully set up nginx proxy manager that's great. Um, and then in the next part of this tutorial, we actually set up a subdomain. We used Nginx Proxy Manager to set up a subdomain. Um, we set up the subdomain manage. And what that means is that whenever people visit the um, subdomain manage.hellohappypeople.com, they come to our server. And then Nginx Proxy Manager says, hey, I know what to do. People who visit manage actually should see me, my login page. Um, and so people will see the login page for Nginx Proxy Manager. And that's all that happens when you set up XBuilder Deployer. Nginx Proxy Manager is a really important part of serving up the web experiments. 
Um, it routes the traffic to different places, it can encrypt the data, and it does all that for you in a nice GUI formula, a format, so it's easy for you to set up, to remember what you've set up, um, and to handle all of those important things without you having to go into the underlying code and, and modify files a bunch of times. Okay, so the final step is to deploy an XBuilder project. So when you deploy an XBuilder project, you go to your server, you clone that repository, um, you do initial configuration steps, just like you did for uh, XBuilder Deployer, um, and then you start your project's containers. So every project comes with a special deploy Docker Compose file, so you're gonna use that file. Um, that tells uh, Docker that, hey, it tells it some important things about what it's doing. One of them is, hey, you should join the XBuilder Deployer network so that the, you can talk to the Nginx proxy manager container. Um, and that's all you have to do there. So now you'll have your XBuilder project also in the XBuilder deployer network. Um, and then what we do is set up a proxy host using Nginx proxy manager to say, okay, let's set up a subdomain, let's say experiment one, um, where if people enter the subdomain experiment one, Hello, happy people.com. They'll come to Nginx Proxy Manager. Nginx Proxy Manager says, hey, I know where you're supposed to go to this container, and then show them the files for our web experiment. Um, and you can set up an arbitrary number of XBuilder projects on your server. Um, you can also set up an arbitrary number of Nginx uh, proxy hosts um, so that you can do this for a whole bunch of experiments. And importantly, your XBuilder project's files are actually housed in your GitHub repository. Um, so if in the future you need more space on your server, you can actually remove these projects if you're not using them anymore. Um, but the files won't go away because they are housed in the GitHub repository. Um, you can also turn off these containers if you want to. If you're no longer running an experiment but you'd like to keep the files on the server, you can stop the containers because you don't need people to visit those sites anymore when that experiment's over. Um, and then importantly, a feature of Docker is that it creates these virtual machines, what they call containers, um, but they actually share resources. So even though these are essentially their own unique computers, um, they actually share the server's resources in a really efficient way. So you can, because you only have a single project in each of these containers, they'll be really efficient about sharing resources and you shouldn't need a whole lot of resources to run all of these containers on your server. Okay, that's it, that's a high level overview of XBuilder Deployer and what it does. Um, if you watch the, you can follow along in the docs, but if you watch the video tutorials, I think it will help it make a lot more sense. Um, and it should be relatively easy for you to get started um, with your own server, setting up your own server, getting a domain name, pointing your domain to your server, and then creating the XBuilder Deployer network, um, Nginx Proxy Manager, and then adding all of your XBuilder projects um, as you do more and more research projects.